Number six, balance the equations below, assuming they occur in a basic solution. And then we have this equation here. So we have aluminum solid plus CrO4 2 minus aqueous, which will yield aluminum hydroxide AlOH3 solid plus CrOH4 minus aqueous. All right. So we're balancing in a basic solution. If the question asks you to balance in either an acidic solution or a basic solution, just know that these balancing questions is a little bit more than just adding coefficients and then calling it a day. Basic solutions and acidic solutions have to deal with um, in either H plus media or OH minus media. So with that in mind, there are a list of rules that we have to get down. Now, what I want to say is that if you know these rules inside and out, and by the way, these rules are pretty standard. If you know all of your rules in your acidic and your basic solutions, and you know which one comes in what order, it doesn't matter what equation that they can throw at you, you're going to get the right answer. But you just got to memorize those rules. So let's go for it. I'm going to shoot down over here because we want to balance in a basic solution, right? But uh oh, the first part is get the acidic answer. Oh no. So whenever we are balancing in a basic solution, we always have to get the acidic answer first, and then we just tweak it a little bit. So now we're back up to here. We now have to balance in a, an acidic solution. So what's the first step for an acidic solution? Well, you got to just break it into half reactions. I got to take this one whole reaction and break it into two. And it's just as easy as just seeing what elements go together. So if I have an aluminum here, the guy, not the guy, but you know, the substance that's going with the aluminum is the one that has the aluminum in it. So these are a pair now. And then let's just see if the other ones make sense. This has a chromium and an oxygen. So this one's the CR and the O and look, there's the CR and the O. So this all works out. So now I know my pairs. So AL is going to go with this one. And the CRO4 2 minus is going to go with the CROH4. Doesn't matter which one you write down first. I'll start from the top. So we have aluminum, which yields AL, OH3. And then I have the CRO4 2 minus yields the CROH4 minus. Now notice how um, I did not write any states, right? I didn't, I didn't write that aluminum was a solid, aqueous, solid, or an aqueous, because it's just too much writing. What we're going to do at the end is when we get the final answer, then we can just add these states back in. But we try to make it as simple as possible. Don't add the states. Step one's done. Step two, we're now going to balance all elements except for hydrogen and oxygen. So don't balance those yet. Don't even look at them. I know it's tempting, but just try to balance all the other elements. So we have one aluminum, one aluminum. So that's already balanced. I could kind of skip it over. And the same thing here, one chromium, CR, and one chromium, CR. So that's all good. And notice how I did number two for both equations. Always work, you know, together for both equations for two, three, and four, the steps. It just works better for that. So I'm just going to skip over step two. It already is balanced. Now we're going to balance the oxygen. And we always balance oxygen first before hydrogen. And we do that by adding H2O. So if we have to add one oxygen somewhere, we will always add it in terms of one H2O. So if you have two oxygens, you'll add two H2Os. No oxygens on this side, but on your product side, you have three of them. So it seems like I need three oxygens on my reactant side. So I will add three H2O. Coming over here, I have four oxygens. I have four oxygens. So that's already balanced. Thank goodness. So step three is done. Almost halfway there for the acidic side. Now we're going to balance 
the hydrogen by adding H plus. So the rule is here that if you want to add one hydrogen, you will add it in terms of one H plus, and don't forget that plus sign, it makes all the difference. So the same thing here, if you need two hydrogens, you'll add two H pluses. So let's see. On the left side here, I have six hydrogens. Let me just get rid of that. Because three times two is six. And then on this side, I only have three. So it seems like I need to add three hydrogens on this side. And I will add them as three H pluses. So plus three H plus. No hydrogens on the left side, but I have four hydrogens on my right side. So I need four hydrogens. So I'll say plus four H plus. And now we're halfway through the acidic solution. All elements are accounted for, hydrogens, oxygens, and all other elements. Now we have to mess with the charges. So step five is we have to add electrons, E minus. Remember, electrons are negative, and we're always gonna add them to the more positive side. So what I like to do here is I'm just gonna drop this a little bit down, and I like to make a little barrier. Just kind of showing me that everything on this side stays on this side, everything on this side stays on this side, we don't cross paths. Now I need to find the total charge on the left and the total charge on the right. But this is a pretty easy way because you don't have to worry about all individual elements. I don't care about the individual aluminum charge or the oxygen charge or the hydrogen charge. All I'm looking for is the upper right hand corner charges. But for example, like H2O, there's no charge in the upper right hand corner. Same thing for aluminum, right? I don't see a charge in the upper right hand corner. That means that there was a zero charge. Same thing for ALOH3. There was no charge in the upper right hand corner. That's zero. But for the H plus, that's where the plus comes in. And just a plus means that it's a plus one. So now, zero times anything, in this case you have three zeros, would still be a zero. Plus, this also was a zero. So the overall total charge for the reactants was a zero. And we're gonna compare that to, this was a zero plus. Now here is a plus one and I have three of them. So I have to multiply. Three times plus one is a plus three. And zero plus three, right? That is a charge, overall charge of a plus three. You will always add electrons to the more positive side. So out of a zero and a plus three, the plus three is obviously the more positive side. So I know that I'm going to have to add electrons here. But how many? Well, as many as it takes to go down to the lower number. So on a number line, three and zero are three slots away. So I'll add three electrons. Now we do the same for the bottom one. So let's see, I have a plus charge, that's a plus one, right? Maybe I'll just do that. And I have four of them, so keep that in mind. So that would be a plus four, plus. Here was a negative two, and you only have one of them. So this would be a minus two. So four minus two, is a plus two charge overall. All right, so that's what we're working with here. And now coming over here, this one was a minus one. You only had one of them. So this is a negative one overall charge. What side is the more positive side? It's this side, right? Plus two. So I know that I have to add electrons to this side. How many? Well, how many does it take to go from a plus two all the way down to negative one? Keep in mind that it takes two slots to go down to zero and then one more slot to go to negative one. So there's a total of three places here if we think of it as a number line. And there you go. And step five is finally done. Now step five is a super important step to get down correctly because you, could, um, you can get more information out of this balancing question. 
Specifically, which one out of these four is the oxidant, the reductant, or the reducing agent, or the oxidizing agent? Now, I'll give you a tidbit here. No products will ever be the reducing agent or the oxidant or the oxidizing agent or the reductant. So like on a multiple choice, if they're asking you which one is the reducing agent and it's like A, B, C, or D, you get rid of already 50% of your answers because the products are never going to be any of these. So now you're just debating which one out of these two is the oxidant and the reductant. And if one of them is the oxidant, the other one has to be the reductant. Now, this just comes from what oxidant and a reductant means. Oxidant means that you're undergoing oxidation. And if you think of Leo, the lion says, grr, L-E-O, loss of electrons is oxidation. And the electrons are always going to be on the right side of the equation. So that's why the fifth step is super important, because as soon as I draw my electrons, right, one's going to be on the right, one's going to be on the left, you can see which one is the oxidant, which one is the reductant. So the oxidant is the one that has the electrons on the right. Seems like this is it. And who got you there? It's the aluminum. So the Al is the oxidant. And we'll just put solid here. So then, if I just say reductant, that means the other CrO4 2 minus has to be the reductant. But now let's just make sense. Well, now does it make sense, right? The reductant, aka undergoing reduction, that's a gain of electrons. And your electrons are always on the left side. And there it is. Who got you there? The CrO4 2 minus. So this checks out. Maybe I'll put like a little. There you go. Now we're back to the, the, the list. Anywho, step six, we need to balance those electrons. But in this case, I have three electrons on the left. I have three electrons on the left. This is my left. Come on, Christina. This is my right. Uh, but there's still three, right? So they're already balanced. I don't have to do step six. Step seven now is since we have those balanced electrons, you can cancel out the like substances because you're just trying to simplify. So that's why we never see electrons in a balanced equation because they're the same on both sides. They get simplified. They cancel out. Now, anything else that... um is found here, well, I do have H pluses on both sides, but the number is not the same, but that's okay because it can get reduced by subtraction. So for example, if we have three H pluses and they all go bye-bye because they're lower than four, how many H pluses would we have left over? It's technically a subtraction, four minus three. You would only have one H plus left over. And I don't see any other substance that is the same on opposite sides. So step seven is done. And now we can just rewrite as one whole equation. Everything that's on the left stays on the left. Everything that's on the right stays on the right. So let's just say I have, um, I guess I'll do the H plus first. So I have one H plus plus three H2O, it does not matter who you state first or second. The only thing that matters is that whatever is on the left has to stay on the left. This will yield ALOH3 plus CROH4, and that's a negative. And now this is my acidic answer. So for right now, Pause the video if you need to, because I'm just going to get rid of all of this stuff up top here. We did all the hard work already, so we don't need this anymore. So bye-bye. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, this is what we did. This was all the hard work to get down to that. And now we have officially done the last step of eight, but we have done the first step of the balance. We got the acidic answer. 
So now we're already on step number two. And step number two says we need to add as many hydroxides, OH minus, to as many as you have H pluses on both sides. So go find those H pluses. That's what makes this equation acidic, H plus for acid. And here it is, right? I have one H plus, and maybe I'll draw this in red to show that it's the acid component. So you're going to add as many OH minuses as you have H pluses. So since I only have one H plus, I'm only going to add one OH minus. But I got to be fair. I got to add it to both sides. So I'm just going to add the one OH minus here. Last step is to simplify, aka we're going to cancel out the like H2Os, the like waters. Because remember the reaction. When you have a hydroxide ion coming together with your hydronium, which is H+, what do you get? Well, you get water, right? And water's neutral. And if you had one OH minus and one H plus, you get one H2O. If you had two OH minuses and two H pluses, you get two H2Os. So this will combine and cancel out one, one, you have one H2O. So this goes bye bye. And now simplify. Um, do we have any H2Os on the other side? No, but I do have H2Os on the same side. So instead of canceling these out, these are actually additive. One H2O coming together with three H2Os is a total of four H2Os. And you can kind of get rid of this. And now I'm finally ready to add and say, here is my basic answer. So now I'm going to add back the states. So we have four H2Os, and with acids and bases, H2O is always a liquid, plus the aluminum, and they said that aluminum was a solid, plus the CrO4, 2 minus, that was aqueous. Yields, we have the Al. OH3, they said that was a solid, plus Cr, OH4 minus, that's aqueous. And then since the hydroxide has also a charge on it, that's also aqueous. And job well done. This is your final answer. Whoop, whoop. All right. What'd you think? Thank you so much for viewing the video. Uh, yeah, I mean, these are crazy, but just remember those steps and whatever comes your way, you got this. So good luck. Keep studying hard. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, please tell your classmates or your friends about this, this cool YouTube channel. Just gets the word out there that this channel exists. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. And I'll be talking to you in later lessons. Okay, bye-bye.